Hmm. How art evolves consciousness. This painting, Body, Mind, Spirit, shows the trajectory of the evolution of human consciousness through the physical, to the mental, to the transcendental. The subject of mortality, whether our consciousness survives bodily death, is a question that haunts us all. This is the first drawing that I did of a skeleton, age five. <laughs> and we can see uh, it's a time when the child's filled with magical thinking, and here we have a power animal on the uh, shoulder of the skeleton, a happy gravestone, a little coffin. Five years later, at age 10, I did a, another depiction of death, uh, but here in a more archetypal and mythological kind of portrayal of the Grim Reaper. At age 17, I was in art school, and I was still drawing the same subject of a skeleton, but now from a more rational perspective, and I was naming all the bones and everything. More discipline and skill. Now, at age 20, I had a dream where I saw my uh, hair half-shaved like this, and so I decided to uh, enact a performance ritual where I'd keep my hair half-shaved for half a year. <laughs> and I did some uh, performances. That I was a billboard painter at the time, and I uh, placed this self-portrait in a dead board. And uh, then I did a self-portrait, put it in an ad slot on the subway, and rode underneath it. Uh, it was called Private Subway. Uh, now, I handed out leaflets with my face on it and invited people to um, call me for dinner or throw it down and step on my face. And kind of a polarity situation. Uh, now, after six months, uh, I did a piece called Brain Sack, and this was how I ended the... Uh, Oh, six months. So I ate a plate of spaghetti, and then I cut my hair onto the plate. Uh, I placed the brain onto the hair, took the universal antidote, syrup of Ipecac, and vomited the spaghetti up onto the brain. I put it all in a sack, and that was brain sack. Um, I was severely depressed, <laughs> if, if you hadn't noticed. And I prayed to a God I did not believe existed uh, to show me a sign that there's a reason to go on living. And within 24 hours, I was invited to a party uh, where I was given LSD for the first time. And I closed my eyes, and I was in a pearlescent spiralic tunnel. I was in the dark and going toward the light, and the light was God. Every conflict and polarity was resolved in this spiritual rebirth canal, and I could see that gray brought the opposites together. And so I decided that would be my mission as an artist, to bring the opposites together, and I changed my name to Gray. Now, uh, the hostess of the party, uh, who, uh, an acquaintance I barely knew in art school, had also taken the LSD, and by the next day, she was the love of my life, and so... Allison and I have been uh, together, married for studio mates for 38 years. <laughs> Within 24 hours of my prayer, I had seen the light and met divine love in the flesh. <laughs> my prayer had been answered. I got a job in a morgue uh, to study the anatomy. Uh, I wanted to make art about consciousness, and 
the body is the box that consciousness comes in. So I knew I'd have to understand it. I spent five years studying there, preparing bodies for dissection, and doing some dissection, and it was kind of an underworld experience, really. Uh, in retrospect, I look back, and uh, it really helped to orient me uh, to appreciating the preciousness of body and soul. Meditations on Mortality was a performance that Alice and I did, Sarah Lawrence actually, she was in white grease paint, I was in black grease paint and uh, meditating on a skeleton there. At the conclusion of the performance, we stepped outside of the circle of duality and sensuously merged our pigments and became gray. <laughs> this is called The Beast. And I was dressed in a military uh, uniform, and as people came into the room, I stamped their hands with the number of the beast. Um, I was acknowledging what I felt to be the evil of the military-industrial complex and acknowledging my complicity uh, with a death machine. As part of the installation, there was a nuclear crucifixion painting, about a 10-foot wide uh, painting, and felt like the same ignorance and brutality that would murder a saint would be responsible for the kind of global self-destruction. Wasteland. Mr. and Mrs. X were on their way to dinner when they were surprised by a nuclear blast. They arrived at a dinner table in hell to feast on money. So that's what we did. We ate the money and drank the blood and vomited it up onto the table. Some art's kind of like shock therapy to <laughs> activate us and, and wake us up to it. This piece called Prayer Wheel, and Allison and I were in gold grease paint and tethered to a, a skeleton and carrying a baby doll. And uh, we did 60 rotations around the prayer wheel, chanting the Omani Paid Me Hong. Uh, a living cross. Allison and I were laying motionless and uh, surrounded in a cross of apples and roses and staring up at the angel of death. Allison uh, nursed our daughter Zena in the heart of a goddess made of 5,500 apples, as I did 100 prostrations at the foot of the goddess. It was at Lincoln Center out of doors. And uh, after the performance, we boxed up the apples and gave them to a shelter for homeless families. At <laughs> this piece was HeartNet, and it was at the American Visionary Art Museum. There's a world map on the back and it was up for a year, and we invited visitors to the museum to write a prayer for the earth. And about 10,000 prayers were hanging on the web there. It was really a, a beautiful outpouring from the community and a new vision of uh, the world. Allison and Zena and I participated in a, uh, or created, uh, an event called World Spirit where we collaborated with uh, musicians and, and other performers. And uh, really, uh, the attempt was to create an experience of unity and healing. And there were about 1,000 people there in the Bay Area to experience that. Now, the same motivation went into creating this series called The Sacred Mirrors. And The Sacred Mirrors started with a performance called Life Energy. And Allison and I um, met with a group of people and were um, doing exercises to get in touch with our life energy. And I made two charts for this uh, performance. One was a nervous system and the other was a kind of uh, subtle energy map. And uh, Allison noticed uh, how people were really enjoying this experience there in, in the gallery, so she suggested that I do an entire series based on this idea. And uh, that was the birth of the sacred mirrors. Uh, she also named the sacred mirrors. So uh, you can see that uh, there we have uh, the framed 
uh, finished example there. And uh, here's Allison and I doing the frames in our basement back in 1985. And we sculpted them and uh, cast them, 21 of them, in our basement. Uh, it provides a philosophical framework for the biological and technological evolution of humanity and ascending toward God consciousness. When you um, experience the sacred mirrors, you get in touch with uh, each one of these paintings and kind of meditate on it and feel the system inside. So you feel the inner systems and then you contemplate um, your various sympathies and prejudices, I suppose, and attempt to uh, relate to the other person as a sacred mirror. And then it gets into the subtle energetic uh, realm. And this is the psychic energy system where we have um, the X-ray anatomy fused with the acupuncture meridians and points, the chakras, the auras, and all floating in a kind of pranic psychoenergetic soup there. And uh, this spiritual energy system shows the progressive dissolving of the um, physical identity into the light body. The universal mind lattice this is an attempt to portray an experience that Allison and I had back on June 3rd, 1976, where he'd taken a massive dose of LSD and entered into an uh, infinite vista of toroidal fountains and drains of light. And it seemed like every being in the universe was one of these balls of light, kind of like a, a cell in the body of God. It seemed like this was what was really real behind the veil of the material world. It was all made of love. The light was love and it connected us all. The divine archetypes, Buddha, Christ, Sophia, they're sacred mirrors of our future enlightenment. After the universal mind lattice experience, Allison and I just wanted to make art about sacred interconnectedness. So here we have a praying painting and it points to the light in the core of uh, all wisdom traditions and here we see in the halo uh, the expressions, the prayers of seven different uh, world wisdom traditions. Kissing shows the infinite bonds of love that unite us beyond the impermanence of the flesh. The holy family points to a hopeful future where there's a planetary civilization, one world, one people. Yes, this is the holy child grown up, and it's really any one of us that carries world spirit in our hearts and feels in alignment with the heavens and wants to share our revelations. This is Gaia. It was based on a vision that I had the day our daughter was born. Our world is in peril, and we have a decision. Evolution or self-destruction. Planetary prayers. With the, with the earth held as sacred in our minds, we pray. We pray for the healing of the life web. Theologue, the union of human and divine consciousness weaving the fabric of space and time in which the self and its surroundings are embedded. The artist's hand holds a spiritual tool of evolutionary vision, and every creative act empowers every other creative act. We can look at the magic, mythic, rational, integral and transcendental thrust of art history and see the entire arc of the evolutionary uh, consciousness going on when we look back uh, through our history. You know, the painter channels the creative force into the artifact and this artifact then becomes a battery to, uh, ready to zap a viewer into a new way of seeing the world. 
And returning to the subject of mortality, here we have the painting Dying, where an ectoplasmic wisp of the soul is leaving the body and going toward the white light. And you can see now, uh, from my past, this magic, mythic, rational, integral, and transcendental reflections on the same subject. Oversoul. Planetary consciousness becomes cosmic consciousness through human consciousness. One. When we gaze into the eyes of the beloved, we're staring into a sacred mirror, and we recognize our oneness. The net of being was based on an ayahuasca experience, and uh, it was a vista of interconnected godheads, uh, each one of them a, a node of uh, an anthropocosmic node of, uh, of awareness. And this is the God self, um, one node. You know, we're each one node of an infinitely interconnected self, a networked self. Now, an image can become part of the culture, and uh, the rock band Tool used this image of the net of being on uh, their Grammy Award-winning album, 10,000 Days. And they also used it in their stage sets. And the the image became a kind of icon of the interconnectedness between music and art. Here's our daughter Zena wearing a net of being dress. And you can see net of being tattoos all over the world. Now, this Ken Wilber's integral map of the four quadrants can help us understand how art evolves consciousness. In the upper left quadrant, we have the origin of art in the inner world of the artist or the individual. And uh, the upper right quadrant, we have the uh, individual making the artifact. In the third quadrant, in the lower right, we have the systems of integration of that artwork into the world. And then in the uh, fourth quadrant, in the lower left, we have the inner world of the collective, and that's our culture, the zeitgeist. It's the interpretation of that artifact. So once we understand things in a new way, it creates a new world. And then a person will have a vision within that new world, and the grand round of art continues. Painting is our ministry, and we go all over the world to festivals. The festival culture wages peace in the world by creating a temporary zone of planetary civilization based on art, music, and love. <laughs> the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors was uh, based on a vision that Allison and I had back in 1985. And it finally came to uh, fruition in 2004. We opened um, our doors in New York City, in Chelsea, and uh, for five years it was a nexus for visionary culture in Manhattan. In 2009, we moved up to the Hudson Valley to build a temple. And this is an experiment in art and uh, spirit and community. We've been collaborating with various visionary artists. There's a, a groundswell of visionary artists all over the world, and uh, our collaborations together are really uh, something to celebrate. Now, this is our current project, and it's called Entheon. Entheon means uh, a place to discover the God within. It'll be a sanctuary of visionary art at Cosm. Visionary art matters because the visionary mystical experience is the most direct contact that we have with the divine. And all sacred art and religious traditions are founded uh, on this mystic state. Now, the best currently available technology for sharing the mystic visionary experience is a well-crafted artistic rendering by an eyewitness. Creativity 
is our spiritual path at Cosm. And Entheon, we want to be a consciousness evolutionary accelerator for f- spiritual friends to experience their unity and uh, with the human family and with the imperiled life web. It's being 3D modeled and it's going to be 3D printed, a new way of making ornamental uh, sculptural architecture. The multi uh, faces of God uh, each have a world religion in their forehead. So this is the many and the one. This is the steeple head pointing us toward the one. Cosmic creativity. Art is an echo of the creative force that birthed the galaxies. And creativity is the way that the cosmos evolves and communicates with itself. The great uplifting of humanity beyond its self-destruction is the redemptive mission of art. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.